welcome to our film of our two-day rail trip from Yangon or Rangoon, the old colonial capital of Burma, which is now named Myanmar, north to Kaikto and the Golden Rock, and then south on day two to the town of Motamar and across the estuary to Molamyin. These are our early morning views of Yangon Station whilst our train is prepared for us to make our two-day journey. Recognise the advertisements? And there's our locomotive on the front of our train. A view of the footplate where the drivers will spend their next couple of days. And there she is again. I find this a very interesting sequence. Picture of the Anglican Cathedral through the trees what appears to be a rather temporary place of Buddhist worship and then a little trainee Buddhist monk taking an interest in all that we were doing a happy little chap and we were pleased to see him and an opportunity to film our train as it comes towards us across this river bridge that we've just crossed. Before we were able to regain our seats on the train we had to wait for another passenger train to come in the other direction and Sandra took these pictures of people working on the line and the trains in fact passing with the interesting passengers on board until finally we trudged up the line and regained our train ourselves.
So this little village with its uh, variety of tradespeople was the scene for our second run past of the morning. And then a very lengthy southbound passenger train interrupts proceedings for a while. train disappears into the distance and we can now get on with the serious business of turning the clock back. train is repositioned for a rerun of the whole event.
under way again past the paddy fields and changing agricultural scene to the next village location. There undoubtedly another run past a more interested spectator. Railway stations and the selling of pots seem to go together in this country. We've seen it on a number of occasions. And here's the next sequence of shots of the run through the station by our train. This very prominent signal gantry indicates our arrival at Bago Station. These images give an impression of the living conditions in and around the edge of what was quite a substantial town. But they are of course living close to the railway premises. This little one seems quite unconcerned. That is railway property. <coughs> this is the very impressive signal box and the less impressive station facilities and a yard complete with its own pig. The locomotive we were using was actually based at Baco and it was able to run back into its shed to be uh, watered. This service loco was standing in the yard and here we are actually in the shed. There were four or five locos allocated to the shed. Some of them I noticed were actually Indian built. Built in the 40s, but built by Indian railways. The close relationship between the two countries, of course, prevailed even more so then. It was interesting that quite young lads seemed to be engaged on routine maintenance of the locomotives, externally at least, but they were all very proud of the locos that they were looking after. And to be fair, the locos did them justice.
This is the Holy of Holies, the shed foreman's office. And now we're making our way back through the yard towards the bridge location for our next run past. And these novice monks are sheltering themselves very carefully from the rising morning sun. sun. We shall see film of this young lady's village in a moment or two. This she was busy cooking lunch. Close to the bridge up yonder that we're walking towards. Hear the murmur of voices. Gosh. Different way of life. So we've crossed the bridge and our train emerges on its extremely smoky approach. I found this run past location just down the line a much more attractive proposition.
During the delay, whilst the engine took on very necessary water supply, I had a look round the infrastructure of the line, much of which was of course British built, probably the water tower in the distance and certainly the water supply crane which is about to come into shot, which was made in Brighouse in Yorkshire at the turn of the last century. Tower line side. The late evening sun shows the train to full advantage as it crosses this quite substantial embankment on a large radius curve.
As we've seen, it is possible to do justice to a run past using a still camera. And here we have a sequence, quite an extended sequence, as the train runs through another village settlement. Which also had some rather interesting uh, items of transport. Off again with our friends Nigel and Nicky Grieg to yet another run past location where a beautiful pagoda or souk provided the backdrop to the run past in the evening sunlight. This part of the trip is probably impossible to describe adequately. We arrived at our station destination, climbed into some rickety trucks and travelled up the most amazing switchback road to this hotel, having lugged our cases the final 200 yards, 300 yards, up a very steep slope. And these early morning shots show the Golden Rock itself, which is supposedly balanced on a very precarious point and has a significant religious importance. And in the distance also were two pagodas on rocky wooded promontories and the whole place was very scenic. But we did ask ourselves what the purpose of this stop was. Next day, we repeated the journey downwards and you can see the various means of conveyance and we finally arrived at the first stopping off point surrounded by porters. Here's Neville being carried by two porters and then we waited around in the sun, in the early morning sun, amongst the numerous beggars and cadgers waiting to get in yet another truck to ride down to the station. Hugh, our guide, one of the aforementioned uh, cadgers, but these were delightful youngsters really, and they were just as interested in us as we were in them. The map shows quite clearly our southerly route from Kaikto to Molamyin. Kaikto station waiting room with its timetable on the wall and its ticket barrier with no queue. And there's our train waiting, simmering in the station for our second day's adventure. This is Kaihito, 
we're departing. these raised walkways quite interesting because of course the water level fluctuates so dramatically between dry season which this is and the wet season later on in the summer that uh, they had to make provision for getting around during both seasons. This was true also of the divisions between the paddy fields which were obviously very ancient divisions established over a long period of years.
probably my sweater.
think we'll sign off photography from this area for the moment. It's pretty unchanging, but interesting nevertheless. Wildlife, buffalo, water, people making a living. Another lifestyle altogether. As I've said previously, the railway offers an unbeatable window into a country, wherever you may be. And these shots were taken by Sandra as we travelled along the line and give some indication of the way of life of the folk in the predominantly rural areas. Here was another very noisy and busy little station stop at this place with an unpronounceable name. Everybody on the platform was thronging round the train and uh, the kiddies particularly were very interested in having their pictures taken. The mothers were a little more coy as you can see. But nevertheless it was a very friendly welcome. I don't know whether these people were aware that we were coming but uh, there was certainly a large number on the platform. And a few more images of life on a station, a rural station in Myanmar. Mothers and babies well in evidence. Time runs out, even on film, and this departure of the train from our little country station signals the end of this particular film. Wait for the next instalment.